integrating the emotion code into the therapy work I'm doing, mostly with women with complex trauma, that I'm able to help them heal on such a deep level compared to what I was able to do before. And... Hello, hello. Thank you for being here, everyone. Welcome to Ascension Gateway. And I am Sharon Sananda Kumara, your host today. I am talking with Aaron Webb. Hi, Aaron. Hi. It's great to good see to, you. Good to see you. Thank you for being here and thank you for sharing what uh, your passion is with how you were in service with uh, humanity at the, at the moment. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. It's so great to see you. It's always great talking with you. I was thinking about this, but over the past 10 years, we've been doing past life work together. And um, it's been really huge in my own healing journey and also been very healing to be able to communicate through you with my loved ones who've passed on. Oh. And every time I've come to see you, my grandmother is there waiting her spirit, <laughs> which I love. And I'm just very grateful for your for you and your your gifts and how you've helped me. Well, thank you. Thank you, Aaron. I'm so glad that it was helpful for you and that I can be a conduit for spirit, as always. So let's talk about your role and uh, how you are helping others. Okay. So you are a licensed professional counselor, LPC, you said, and you help people with emotional code. You're an emotional code practitioner. And what I really love to hear is that you also help people with their empathic abilities and helping them to navigate through those. Can you share about that and as much yeah. as you'd like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, well, I would say probably 99%, maybe 100% of my clients are highly sensitive and empathic. And most of them have uh, histories of trauma. And so um, just been very focused over the past four years that I've been doing my private practice on figuring out techniques that help with healing and releasing. And I just keep getting more of those clients are finding me. And I think there's a reason for that. And um, I identify myself as highly sensitive and empath, and empath also. And I've done a lot of healing myself, which, you know, through doing that and seeing what works and also being able to bring that to my clients has been really amazing to see the outcomes. Um, so I wanted to talk about that today, kind of the work that I'm doing with them. Um, I also want to talk about a little bit about my own healing journey and then um, some techniques that empaths and highly sensitive people can use for releasing and healing. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, Let's yeah. do it. Okay. Let's great. dive in. Um, maybe just start with my journey. I'm not going to go all the way back, but i um, been on this journey of healing for a long time, but um, I thought maybe just focusing on from the lockdowns onward, what's been going on with the COVID lockdowns. And, you know, during, okay. during that time, so that was four years ago now, which is crazy. Um, during the lockdowns, uh, I went through a real dark night of the soul um, and did a lot of waking up spiritually, um, waking up to what's going on in the world and also experienced a lot of change and loss, like a lot of other people did. And, I think it's really important to remember um, that that we went through a collective trauma during the lockdowns and, and we haven't fully recovered. And I definitely see that with my clients and people are still not back to how they used to be. And so we're recovering from that. Um, but part of what happened for me during that dark night of the soul was I relapsed with smoking cigarettes and that destroyed my gut health, um, increased anxiety and depression. Um, so I had a rough year before I finally decided, okay, I need to look at this. I need to make changes. And so I, I read the emotion code book by Dr. Bradley Nelson. Mm. And I did some training on emotional freedom techniques, tapping. So I started using those techniques with myself and, uh, I released the urge to smoke entirely, which I've never, I started smoking when I was 13. I've never been able to get rid of it before using the emotion code. So that's gone, which is a huge relief and liberation. Yeah. Um, and healed my gut too, and was able to go off of uh, antidepressants that I've taken periodically. And so just, you know, something for, that's good to know, I don't know if everybody knows this, but I'm always trying to educate people about it, is that 90 to 95% of serotonin is made in our gut, in our microbiome. I and did not know that. 
50% of dopamine. So you can see how it's very connected to depression and anxiety. And also 70% of our immune system tissue is in our digestive system. Can you repeat that, please? Oh, yeah. That's so important. 90% of serotonin and 50% of dopamine is made in our microbiome, right? Which is from wow. our mouth down. Inner. And 70% of our, 70 to 80% of our digestive uh, or immune system tissue is in our digestive system. So wow. yeah. it's very powerful to heal your gut. And so I've been trying to just share this because it, it also impacted me so greatly. Um, so, so during that time, you know, during the lockdowns, I experienced a lot of alienation. I've always been an outsider, but never to that degree. And, and I was resisting it for a while. And then I decided um, I just need to embrace the isolation. I'm going to use this time to kind of be a hermit and go inward and do that deeper healing work. So I, I dove in and I released um, over a thousand trapped emotions that I was holding in my body and energetic body. Um, mm. I had a heart wall that had 38 layers of emotions that I released and uh, started to notice really big changes in terms of um, not reacting to see things the same way, relationship shifting, being able to be free of the addiction. Um, and, and just also feeling more ability to manifest what I'm trying to create in my life. That was really huge. Um, and then um, I also did tapping a lot. The one thing I tapping is really good for is when uh, you're ruminating overthinking, which is something that highly sensitive people and empathic people tend to do. It can release those thoughts. It's also really helpful when um, you're having an emotion and you're feeling that impulse to suppress it, to get through the day, you can do some tapping and just uh, access it, release it in the moment. So you're not suppressing it, which is because mm -hmm. when we suppress emotions, that's when they get trapped. And so it's very helpful to get rid of them in the moment. Um, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a very good point. Yeah. When we suppress emotions is when they get trapped. That It makes sense. Yeah. But what? Yeah. That's, that's huge too. Thank right. You. And then for, for people that are empathic, they also absorb emotions. So when someone's really angry around you or really upset, you can absorb that from them and it just gets stuck in you. So it's yeah. a really good way to be able to check in. If you've had an intense interact with, interaction with somebody to be able to, Oh, did I absorb something and then release it? Um, and then the things that I want to share about emotion code is that um, when we do trap emotions, it causes distortion in our body. It causes energy blockages and imbalance. And the way this can show up is kind of warning signals that you have this going on is that it can be fatigue, pain, muscle tension, uh, emotional reactivity, anxiety, depression, addiction, feeling really stuck. Um, in children, it can be contribute emotions that are trapped can be contributing to challenging behaviors, sleep disturbance, uh, anxiety, depression, bedwetting, nervous habits like tics, um, and distractibility. So there's a lot that you can do to help with that. Um, also, birth trauma and medical trauma can cause trapped emotions for children, which I've had been able to release for a couple, which has been amazing. Um, nice. I've even been able to release trapped emotions for a couple of babies that were in utero, which was also very amazing. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, totally. Um, they absorb from their mother if their mother's mm. going through a lot. Sure. And we can also inherit them too, which is fascinating to me. So when you're releasing an inherited emotion, you're also releasing it for your ancestors, which is, is amazing. And then um, for, you know, with birth trauma too, medical trauma, it also can lead to trapped emotions for the parents. So that's, you know, something that's a technique that can be really helpful if a family's been through that. Um, so let me ask you if, can, yeah. if I can interrupt you for a second. Yes. When you are working on, when you have worked on a baby in utero, did you use tapping? Is that, uh, is that how you were able to? I'm using the emotion code for that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So being able to first get permission from the babies, from their spirit, their subconscious right. to do that work. And um, and from the mother and just ask, are there any trapped emotions that we can release? Right. See what comes up. And yeah, it's, it's, it. really, and it's really, I think very um, healing for the mother too, to know that they're being able to release what they cause their baby to absorb unintentionally, but mm -hmm. to know they're, you know, bringing that baby in with more of a clean slate emotionally, mm -hmm. starting off with 
less trapped emotions. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. The one time when I was working on a, when a pregnant mom, the baby was kicking as we were releasing and it was really. A friend's dog, you can, you can do emotion code with animals too. Mm -hmm. um, and after working on the dog, the next time I saw the dog, I, I felt like the dog came up to me and was saying, thank you. And was communicating and it was very, a very sweet moment, you know, just having that. I don't normally have telepathy with animals, but I really felt that that was the message I was getting. Oh, that, sure. Yeah. yeah. The, the dog had aware. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun working with animals. They feel really different um, when you're connecting with them. Yeah. I worked on um, my cousin's dog. You can do it from far away. You don't even have to be there and um, from a distance. And the dog was having um, kidney failure and they didn't know what to do. And uh, released a bunch of trapped emotions that the dog, his name is Arrow, he, that he trapped when his brother that he had always lived with his whole life died suddenly. And wow. after the emotions were released, the the dog stopped um, drinking constantly and urinating frequently and the liver or was was better or the kidney. So it's pretty amazing. They, they don't give me full credit for it and that's okay, but I'm just, it was really <laughs> nice to be able to help. To help as long him. as he's helped. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. What else would you like to share? I mean, this is, uh, this is fascinating. I love this. I, um, yeah, whatever we can do to help, to help get the, that emotion moving through. That was one thing that Yeshua always taught me or helped me understand was because I'd ask him, you know, if I'm in some kind of a trauma, how do you deal with that? What do you, you know, how do you not, how does it not affect you? Like, you know, that kind of thing. He said, just let it flow. I just let it flow through me. Mm -hmm. Just got to let it flow. Don't let it stick. Yes. So this is exactly what you're talking about. So one technique for not suppressing emotions, like I mentioned, is doing tapping and with the tapping, you can do it on the side of your hands. You know, you can do something like, you know, even though, I am really overwhelmed right now. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I'm really stressed, I deeply and completely accept myself, right? And you can do, you can switch hands and you can keep that going for a couple minutes. You can set a, a timer on your, your phone or something. And, but just to, to practice both the release and the acceptance of the feeling is part of it too. Accepting yourself fully, even though you're having an experience helps mm -hmm. release. Um, the other thing you can do is just, you can tap on the different points. So this is called a round when you start yeah. here and then you go here and here, and then you do under the eye and then here and here. And these all correlate to different parts of your body, different organs. And then under here, um, is the last one. So doing that is a round. So what you can do is do rounds while you're letting the thoughts out. So you're just saying out loud, I can't believe this happened again. This is so frustrating. So you're letting it go and you're letting both the thoughts go and the emotions that are coming up. Um, another really good one is what's called heart breathing. It's a meditation practice, but just imagining breathing in love, light, warmth, whatever you want to breathe in to your heart and then breathing out of your heart, the pain or the suffering or the you know, discomfort. You can also do that with imagining smoke coming out of your head if you're, you know, trying to release anger or frustration. Uh, I think with pain, it's better to try to release it from your heart. But so that's a technique you can use in the moment. Um, and just, yeah, really being able to sit with yourself, identify the emotion, acknowledge it, don't fight it. When you're doing the heart breathing also, it's important to relax your chest. Um, when we when we feel threatened, we go in because we're protecting right. our organs and our lungs. So when we're relaxed, that's another trick you can do when you want to calm down is just relax your shoulders and your chest. And that tells your brain that you're safe. So it's a way to kind of trick your brain to calm down. So that's another one that you can do um, in the moment. But and then if, if you're not able to following up with doing emotion code to find out did I suppress any, did I trap anything? Is there anything I need to release? So whenever I have a really intense interaction with anybody, I follow up with emotion code and see what, what's there. And so that's another way because we, I try really hard not to suppress them, but I do all the time. 
And um, so that's the amazing thing about the emotion code is that we don't know they're trapped. We don't know they're there. So we can, yeah. we can communicate with the subconscious mind to find out. And so what you're doing, just so your, your audience knows a little bit more about it, um, is that there's, there's a chart of 60 emotions and each emotion has different emotional frequencies. So shame and fear are lowest frequencies, joy and abundance are highest. Um, so you just, what you're doing is you're using muscle testing. So we do the ring test. So if I were working with you, I would say, is there a trapped emotion that we can release? And I would, and I would get, this is yes. And that's no, and I would get a yes. And then we'd say, okay, so we'd be, I would be communicating with your subconscious and uh, which we can do because we're, everything's energy and we're all connected. And right. So then we would get it down to, okay, is it in column A? And maybe yes. And then is it in an odd row? Yes. Okay. Is it in row one? No, it's in three. And then we go to three and we would see, oh, is it crying? No. Is it discouragement? Yeah. Okay. And then we would take a magnet and you, you don't need a magnet because we are actually magnetic, but it's sort of a prop and it magnifies the intention. And that's all we're using is the intention to release once we've identified it. And that's all we need. And we're incredibly powerful with healing ourselves. And, okay, and so then we just go along the central meridian three times and we ask, did we release it? Yes. And then it's gone. And so then you keep going. So you can focus on particular issues like uh, cravings for first, you know, an addiction, overeating, um, you know, anything that you want. There's so many different ways you can approach it. Um, you can clear trapped emotions that are blocking your chakras. You know, there's, you know, all kinds of things you can do. Um, so that's really helpful in the moment, you know, when you've gone sure. through something and you're not able to release it, to follow up with that. And Sure, yeah. Uh, so let me ask you this question. So you're, you're, in, uh, you're a mainstream therapist. Yes, yes. And you're bringing these not so mainstream therapies <laughs> into your practice. This is so exciting. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, so it, it's part of the changes I've gone through. Um, you know, I've been doing therapy work for more than 20 years. I've worked in uh, with youth and families and residential treatment programs, day treatment programs. Um, I worked for 10 years at Coffee Creek Correctional Facility. I worked for Portland Community College and I was a family advocate and I uh, facilitated a program where the children got to come in and be with their mothers. And we did gardening and reading and, and had lunch and it was therapeutic visitation. So I did that for a long time too. Um, and then I did, I've been doing private practice for four years and I always consider myself to be a therapist, you know, but never a healer. So that's something that shifted as I got into doing this work. Now I'm, you know, defining myself also as a healer and an energy healing practitioner. Um, nice. It's different. not everybody's open, um, but I've found with integrating the emotion code into the therapy work I'm doing, mostly with women with complex trauma, that I'm able to help them heal on such a deep level compared to what I was able to do before. And um, I've been combining approaches that are really helpful with trauma. Um, been combining um, an approach called internal family systems with emotion code. I don't know if anyone else is doing it out there. I, I'd love to meet them if they are. Uh, I like to think it's my idea, but I'm also sharing it so that people can use it. But sure. so with that, um, with internal family systems, I have some notes here because it's a little, I want to make sure I explain it. But mm -hmm. what... According to internal family systems, we have subpersonalities called parts, and each part has its own feelings, perspectives, memories, and there's two categories of parts. There's what are called the protectors and the exiles, and the exiles are the vulnerable parts um, that we basically lock up inside of us and leave frozen in the past. And so when we talk about, you know, your inner wounded child has been triggered or activated, that's what we're talking about. Um, so for that, just thinking of times when you've been experienced um, a lot of grief or loss, uh, feeling, you know, experience things that are, um, you know, terrified, feeling rejected, embarrassed, shame, all those sensations, thinking, you know, what, when you were a kid, what you did with those sensations, a lot of people just kind of pushed them down into the metaphorical basement and they're, they're mm -hmm. frozen, time, but they're in your body. And 
So um, what we can do with internal family systems, what you do is you, you basically have people revisit those exile memories and communicate with that inner wounded part through visualization and help them heal. And so that's one way of integrating that sub part back into your personality, into your uh, self with a capital S according to internal family systems. It's kind of like your higher self. So we're trying to integrate those parts back in. And when we integrate those parts back in, we also free up the childhood qualities that were buried at the same time as the exiles were formed, which are curiosity and joyfulness and playfulness and creativity. So all of that gets freed up too as we integrate the exiles. And what's helpful about the emotion code, a couple things is combining it is that we can use the emotion code communicating with the subconscious to find out the ages of the exiles. And then we can release all the trapped emotions and post-trauma energies that they're carrying, which nice. literally frees them of their burdens that they've been holding. It's nice. really released. And so much deeper than, you know, including the emotion code really allows you to get much deeper. Um, so I, that's kind of the work I've been the most excited about lately. There's always that's something true. new and bringing, but, you know, I love to bring that excitement to the, to the work I'm doing. Um, and uh, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to share about. That. Let me share something with you real quick. You know, that is um, the exact work that Yeshua was doing with me 20 years ago when we were working together is finding those uh, exiled parts <laughs> and we would give them names like the repeater, the counter, the, the, this or the, that, you know, the, whatever names we gave, gave that little girl. Yes. And uh, yeah. And he helped me heal those. That was, it's ex pretty much the exact same work. I love this. Yeah. Back yes. then I didn't have anybody to turn to. So I'm so happy that this, um, not that I wouldn't, I, Yeshua was my key, my counselor. So, you know, yeah. in my room, my therapist and my counselor in my room. <laughs> well, a lot I of, love this. A lot of work on your own with, with, with help. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did all my work that way. Yeah. Yeah. With him. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and it was like all you're talking about. Yeah. Right. And, and I think really doing that inner child work is, is critical and, mm -hmm. um, you know, and internal family systems is definitely recognized as being very effective for helping with healing trauma and yeah. because it focuses on that. And, um, you know, for myself, when I worked on my exiles, um, I had them from age two, three, four, and six, which correlates to times when my, my parents were divorced and then my father died and we moved away from my beloved grandmother. And uh, then we moved away from my kindergarten teacher in the town that I loved. So those are all experiences that I had that caused exiles to form. And you can see how, you know, most of us have been through things like that. Mm -hmm. And we're hearing this we're, we're, it's just still in there. It's stuck. Yeah. And it affects us. And, you know, so I wasn't sure what it was going to do when I released mine, but what happened what, that was a little bit of a surprise was I suddenly just started getting all this really positive feedback from my clients being really open and expressing a lot of gratitude and expressing how connected and supported they feel. And I've always, you know, I think I've done good work with my clients over the last, you know, 20 plus years, but I've never had them be able to be so open with me about that. And I think something because of that release of the exiles shifted something. And, sure. you know, and so just thinking about this idea that, you know, when healers heal themselves, they become a more powerful healing presence for others. And I really saw that happen. Perfect. And, yeah. And, you know, I'm just, I'm so excited to, you know, I mean, each person that you're helping is helping us on a collective level, right? Helping yourself and helping other people. It's all, it affects yeah. us all. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. I kind of see us all as parts of the one anyway. I mean, we're, we're, we're healing the parts of the individual parts of the one, yes. you know, it just, it goes deeper and deeper or higher and higher, but yeah, <laughs> we're just bringing in all our parts in from the, the one the all that is one little by little. Yes. Yeah. And just thinking about, you know, every trapped emotion that you release, you're raising your frequency. So I've been thinking of my, my mission 
more lately is just, you know, helping raise the frequency of, of the planet, you know, one person at a time. Right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. And we need you. I love this. Go ahead. We yeah. Well, so I was thinking about one of my clients that I did in her exile work. Um, I just wanted to read what she, she sent to me. Um, she said she noticed a bit more of a shift after clearing the emotions held by her exiles. And uh, she said, it seems that as I give my exiles the comfort they crave, the more they assimilate and I don't feel so needy. I'm not looking for my needs to be provided by other people. I'm also, it's also getting easier for me to take better care of myself. So that's, you know, really interesting. Nice. And I've just started doing this work. And sometimes it's hard to know what's doing what because we're approaching things from all different angles. But that, you know, that's just really, I mean, that's exactly what I was hoping that was going to help her with. And... Yeah.